and liftoff. For the 500th time from Gagarin's start, a rocket roaring into the air. Space so is unforgiving. Up here, one tiny mistake can mean the difference between life and death. Which is why, before an astronaut has a chance to experience this extraterrestrial heaven, they have to go through hell on Earth. Canadian astronaut David St. Jacques has been training for this mission for nine years. He's booked his ticket to space for December, hitching a ride aboard a Russian rocket to the International Space Station. It's an old dream that's been on the back of my mind ever since uh, I was a young boy. I mean, I can't remember not fantasizing about it. St. Jacques' resume seems almost superhuman. He's an engineer has a PhD in astrophysics, and even worked as a medical doctor in a remote Inuit community in the north. Along the way, he also became a pilot and learned five languages. But training to become a certified spaceman is unlike any challenge he's faced before, both physically and mentally. Thinking like an astronaut, if you want. So that has been the biggest uh, part of it. Thinking like an astronaut is one of the first lessons of how to survive in space. The first two years of astronaut training are largely spent inside a classroom. 16 different technical courses to master the mechanics of their vehicle, the Soyuz rocket, and their home, the International Space Station. They also need basic medical training in case someone gets hurt. And once they've aced the written tests, it's time to get their feet wet. Going for a swim in a 300-pound spacesuit, which brings us to lesson two, microgravity. Okay, so this is a good position okay. for you. To get used to working in zero gravity, astronauts yeah, spend a lot of time training inside NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, a fancy name for a huge swimming pool. They'll spend up to seven hours at a time down here, practicing their spacewalks, loosening and tightening bolts and screws, in slow motion with little resistance and giant fingers. Not so good for this. These spacewalks require tremendous stamina. Training like an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> their physical training made all the more important because as soon as they're in space, their muscles will begin to deteriorate. The whole point of exercise for astronauts is, is all about being as fit as you can for the launch because you know it's only gonna, only gonna go down from there. <laughs> St. Jacques will spend six months living aboard the International Space Station, but much of his training here focuses on just a few hours of that mission, the launch and the landing. Lesson number three, grace under pressure. After spending months living in zero gravity, the feeling of re-entering Earth's atmosphere can be difficult to describe. My first thought was, this must be what it feels like to be in a barrel going over Niagara Falls, only the barrel's on fire. The space capsule experiences temperatures of more than 1,500 degrees centigrade and speeds of 30,000 kilometers an hour. But the biggest challenge for the astronauts is the gravitational force, up to eight times their body weight. The force pushes on your chest, so you have to know how to breathe correctly to counteract those forces, says Russian astronaut trainer Alexander Yufkin. I mean, it feels like you are, uh, that someone is sitting on your chest. Largest to prepare, astronauts take a test world. drive in this centrifuge years. simulator, like a roller coaster, but with 10 times the g-force. And you start to feel like the back of your throat, your glottis kind of nudging at the back of your throat. That's kind of strange. It makes you want to cough. Um, and you have to focus because uh, you're kind of, you feel like your IQ is going down as the g's are going down. And that's a problem because if the automatic controls fail, Saint-Jacques may have to take control himself to land the capsule. Fortunately, he won't be flying solo. Which brings us to the final lesson, communication. Interesting, we barely see each other's face, we just see each other's hands working. Saint-Jacques will co-pilot the Soyuz rocket alongside Russian commander Oleg Kononenko and American Anne McLean. Their training includes a wilderness expedition in the Canadian Arctic, forced to work as a team in minus 40 degrees with basic gear. I mean, we spend, the, you know, hundreds of hours together uh, fighting <laughs> really, really bad situations in these simulators, so we kind of know each other very well, the crew, it, it makes us brothers and sisters in arms. Uh, it's this one, right? 
All astronauts must also learn English and Russian, well enough to communicate with Moscow's mission control while aboard the Soyuz. Astronauts even take public speaking courses. Hi, I'm David St. Jacques. I'm an astronaut with the Canadian Space Agency. And media training, since they'll be expected to give presentations to Canadian schools and interviews like this one to Canadian journalists to share their experience with people back home on Earth. I think that's really the lesson for me is the fact that uh, the, the trick is to be yourself, to uh, not try to act in any funny way, special way of try to decide what should an astronaut be like or do. No, no, it, be yourself. That's really how you manage to connect better with people. Hey, thanks for watching Global News. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like the video. You can also hit the subscribe button on your screen to make sure that you get all the latest international news and trending video.